The son of the late Flint City Councilman Eric Mays has filed a lawsuit related to the handling of his father's remains. Eric Hakeem Dante Mays filed this lawsuit in 7th Judicial Circuit Court. In it, his attorneys allege Lawrence E. Moon Funeral Home, along with other members of the family, have violated Michigan law, committed fraud and conspiracy in planning a funeral. And they don't have the legal right to the councilman's remains. Feel more or less just axed out. It's the best way I can put it. I say I just want to give him, you know, the proper send up that he deserves. A hearing happened this afternoon in Judge Brian Pickell's courtroom. Eric Mays' son's attorney says right now everything is on hold. And Judge Pickell did uh, rule in our favor with respect to our motion for a temporary restraining order. And so the purpose of that is at present to enjoin Moon Funeral Home from doing anything further with respect to Eric and his body and the funeral arrangements that have already been planned um, pending the outcome of another hearing which is set for Thursday morning. Funeral arrangements and an obituary remain posted on the Lawrence E. Moon website. We reached out to a family member who was named in the lawsuit and did not hear back. That court hearing on Thursday is set for 10 a.m. My dad to have the home going that he desired. That is good for him. That's all there is to it. The lone son of the late Flint City Councilman Eric Mays speaking out ahead of a court battle over his father's body. Mays died suddenly at his home on February 24th. Ahead of the funeral service originally scheduled for the end of this week, the Lento Law Group filed a lawsuit on behalf of Eric Hakeem Mays against the late Mays' surviving siblings and Flint's Lawrence E. Moon Funeral Home. That lawsuit asks a Genesee Circuit Court judge to release Mays' body to a son and cancel pending funeral arrangements being handled by Lawrence E. Moon. It claims two of the councilman's siblings falsely told the Genesee County Medical Examiner's Office that his father had no children for financial reasons. Our Don Jones covering all of this right now. She spoke with Eric Mays' son, his siblings, and the law firm behind this lawsuit. She joins us now in the studio with more. Don. Matt and Tiffany, I went to the Lento Law Offices today in downtown Flint and sat down with Eric Mays' son and his attorney. I was trying to understand how we got to this point of the son filing a lawsuit against Mays' surviving siblings. Mays died in his home on Saturday, February 24th. Um, upon his death, the Genesee Medical, uh, Medical Examiner's Office sent an investigator to the residence to conduct a death investigation. Her name was Amanda Rhodes. Uh, upon arrival to the residence, Miss Rhodes was greeted by two of Eric's siblings, Sherman Mays and Veronica Simon. And as is customary in death investigation, she tried to ascertain the identity of next of kin. And so she asked Sherman and Veronica, um, did Mr. Mays have a spouse? And they answered no, which is accurate. And then they, uh, she asked, did he have any adult children over the age of 18? And they answered no. Now that no is despite knowledge of our client, Eric Hakeem Mays, they, they know of his existence, they know his age, they know his parentage, they're fully aware of his existence. The Lento Law Offices filed a lawsuit against Mays' four siblings, accusing them of fraud against Genesee County and intentionally keeping Eric Hakeem Mays out of his late father's final affairs. I asked Eric how he learned of his father's passing. Well, I was born in Flint, but I was raised in Grand Rapids. Grand Rapids? Mm -hmm. uh, where were you when your dad died? I was at Grand Rapids at home. Okay, and how were you made aware of the fact that your dad died? By the family. Okay, so they contacted you mm -hmm. and told you. So, um, when did they call you? They actually called me around the time that they were doing chest compression on my dad, so approximately 8.30, 8.45 p.m. In a press release, the Lento Group alleged that Mays' family was rogue and estranged, and they were working with Lawrence e. Moon Funeral Home to deprive Mays' son of his remains. It's the same motivation that in any one of these kinds of situations, when somebody passes away without a will, family members start appearing um, because they see a potential opportunity to have a cash grab. According to the lawsuit, Eric would like to move his dad's body to a Saginaw funeral home. Does anyone think that is in Saginaw would be a disservice to the 9,000 people he represented in the first war? I, I can't speak to that. I mean, I think the... May I ask him or no? I mean, do you think that you're, I mean, 
your dad was, I've talked to them, since your dad died, I've been all in the first ward, and your dad was beloved in the first ward. Oh, absolutely. There's and, no question um, about he that. represented th that ward for uh, 10 years, but he was on the ground and, and activism. So it's 9,000 people in the ward. Census data says that it's a, it's a poor ward. You think they'll be able to get to Saginaw? Or it, 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 right now, it, that's not your concern. I'm just, you know, Saginaw is a ways away for, you know, a poor community. Well, I, I think that the people, not, not to cut you off, but I, I think the people of Flint who cared for Eric Mays will endeavor to, to be there to honor his memory if they so choose. I think doing it outside of Flint, um, given the political climate here, and there, there were elements, you know. It's not going to be outside of Flint. It's at the House of Prayer. Oh, right. Right, so I think she's the, thinking that. Well, the funeral home is just going to be a sign enough <clears throat> for a personal preference for me, nothing else. But he will be represented by everybody in Flint and first for our house of prayer for his funeral, for his home going. Okay, and is, is, is that still taking place Saturday or there's no That's date? up in the air pending Thursday. Okay. The, what, what the court decides to do on Thursday, then, then funeral arrangements will be more solid at that point. And we had many more questions, but the interview was cut short at the request of the law firm. Coming up tonight at 6 o'clock, we sit down with Mays' surviving four siblings. Next. There, there's no reason, no reason to whatsoever. defame us. If anything is fraudulent, it's these lies these written lies, which is called defamation. The four surviving siblings of the late councilman Eric May speaking out to ABC 12 about the lawsuit filed by the late councilman's son over his remains. The siblings are saying they done nothing wrong. They tell us Eric Hakeem Mays, the son of Eric Mays, was with family working on his father's arrangements until the law firm showed up. Our Don Jones talked to them and she joins us now in the studio with more. Don. Mays' four surviving siblings are being named in a lawsuit. Sister Veronica is accused of not telling the medical examiner that the late councilman had a son. We spoke to them moments after Veronica was served. And yeah. now, not, not five minutes ago, I was served with what looks like a 200-page lawsuit that, that, um, yeah, that. And it says two of the late councilman's siblings, Sherman Mays and Veronica Simon, perpetrated a fraud on the Genesee County Medical Examiner's Office by falsely representing to one of its investigators that the late councilman had no children. I haven't spoken to anybody. I certainly wouldn't have said that. The family recounts what happened in the days following the death of Mays. She says representatives from the Lintel Law Firm was at her home 24 hours after Mays' death. Every single family member was here, except Kevin, because he's in Georgia. But every single family member, including Hakeem, was here. We disagreed with having a horse-drawn carriage pulling a, a clear see-through casket down, the, down Saginaw Street. We disagreed with that. Yeah. We wanted yeah. something simple. Yeah, yeah at, at the Capitol Theater, for one. Eric Mays' older brother, Kevin, blames the Lento Law Group for the confusion surrounding the funeral arrangements. The night that the Lento Law Group inserted themselves, and this bishop inserted themselves into our, our family. Um, I came was here. I mean, I'm I'm on the phone. I've been on the phone for a week, <laughs> and that night, I came was like, "Hey, whatever we want to do, you know, whatever the family want to do, I'm down." Until. This law group and the bishop couldn't do what they wanted to do, and they threw a wedge in my family. 
The attorney representing Mays' son is suing the family for the deceased councilman's remains. They allege that the siblings are in possession of the body unlawfully. The siblings say all they want is to have a service for their brother. If they release the body to them, we're not concerned with that. One, that's just a body. It's an empty shell. The minute he took his last breath, God had his soul. That's the important part. We just want to have a memorial in his honor as siblings, as cousins, as nieces, nephews. We got family coming from across the country from this memorial. We're not changing it. They can't dictate to us that we can't honor Eric Mays. We're going to rejoice. We're going to celebrate. We're going to honor. We're going to remember our friend, our advocate, our fighter, our voice, Councilman Eric Mays. Over the weekend, community members held several vigils in Eric May's memory. This one on Saturday happened outside Flint City Hall. Dozens of people, including Eric Hakim Deontay Mays, gathered for a candlelight vigil. The younger Mays, along with Bishop Patrick Munnerlin and friends and colleagues of the late councilman, all spoke while community members joined them in prayer. <laughs> Yesterday, a green and white balloon release was held at Hasselbring Park to remember Mays. Eric Mays' untimely passing is creating a vacancy on the Flint City Council. He represented the first ward for more than a decade. In accordance with the city charter, council is asking first ward residents interested in the position to send a resume or letter of interest to City Hall by 5 p.m. on March 18th. Council members will then decide on someone to temporarily fill the seat until a special election is held. So what do you have to say about my boy Mays, Mitch? Oh, uh, I can't hardly say right now because it's, it's not real to me until I, until they take me over to his house where the scene of the, whatever. They treat it like it's a crime. This lawyer came over to my house and he asked me, he said, you all right? He said, your boy gone. And I said, whoop. Take me over there. He said, you can't because the popos are too crowded around on Russell Street. He said, you just stay put for one hour and I'll be back. And I'm going to take you to dinner while I go pick up the other council. And take, and then from then, they just, they won't let me talk. They just said, we're going to take you to get a haircut and get you new clothes. I said, wait a minute. I'd rather have a car just like me. <laughs> they said, wait a minute. Could you drive? I said, yeah. They said, show me your license. I said, Mitch, you say you'd rather have a car? Yeah, instead of clothes and shave and all that he stuff. He said he like Eric. He had on no clothes. You put well, the car before the horse. This is his main man, Mitch, y'all. He was at every city council meeting. You can look at some of the videos and you will see him up there supporting Mays 100%. 100%. And he knows like I know that everything that, everything that Eric was for down there, city council was against. Everything he was for, they was against. Yeah. So, so it's gonna be all right, Mitch. We know we know who his real friends were. Yeah, I call this we know who his Chicago. real friends. It's gonna be a whole it's gonna be a whole lot of bullshit sitting up in that funeral next Saturday. Oh Lord, there it is, America. Get ready, get ready. <laughs> we coming. We black knights. This particular mission we do know of it. But we gonna come out victoriously. That's come from Reverend Jesse Jackson. And I don't know how y'all feel about this, but I'm feeling, I'm feeling some type of way how they running this shit, y'all. I'm feeling some type of way. But this is his main man right here, y'all. Mitch. Y'all might see him all over Flint walking. Y'all think he crazy. This man got good sense. He got damn good sense. And God bless Woodson. He the one that picked me up in the same spot you rolled by me yesterday, man. Uh -huh. I would have picked you up, but I was on my way to go do something. But I know that's where you be at all the time. I believe you, man. I believe you. I'm taking you to see Mr. Drysdale. Yeah. <laughs> Eric called me Mr. Drysdale. I was his personal banker. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I was his personal banker. Shot and asked me, how much money do Mays owe you now, Dirty? I said. Paid in full. Paid in full. Ooh. He's paid in full. I want to 
walked in, I said, Daryl, you got that car. Because he done sued the whole plant. <laughs> so we going to get paid big time. <laughs> Our money is here right now. Uh, it's just going to, after the, whatever. So, got. To the world, RL is doing all right. Everybody's been worried about RL. He's doing good.